What's up you guys, it's Max here, and I'm going to bring you guys, not a weapon review, but it's sort of a controversial uh, video. It's going to be a video response to Luton and Level Cap's uh, video on, they, well they did a Dilcom, obviously, and they talked about uh, maybe like destructible MCOMs, dinosaur mode for Battlefield 3. I just kind of want to add on my opinions to what they talked about in general. So, um, actually, let's start off with my own topic balance and unbalanced weapons. I got a comment from a good friend, he's also on YouTube, his link will be in the description about, you know, you know, basically balance and unbalanced weapons on my USAS 12 review. And it's, it's very controversial because if all the guns are balanced, then the game would be kind of boring because there wouldn't be like any, you know, fun, good weapons to use. And there's always going to be special perks about using each weapon. So if you use an M16A3, it's going to be always going to be better at long range than a shotgun. If you use a shotgun, it's always going to be, you know, a slightly bit better at CQB than an assault rifle. So, you know, each each weapons have have to have their own stats. Um, it's just finding the correct counterweight in order to bring that bring that weapon down to its own level. So, let's say for example the AEK 971. Everybody knows that it has a pretty pretty decent stopping power actually with a high rate of fire. I think you know, for one, if you have a high rate of fire, it should do a little less damage because you can throw more bullets out there, you can hit your enemy within, you know, a shorter amount of time than let's say like a G3A3 would. But um let that that's actually a good topic. Um the G3A3, it has a slow rate of fire, but that's good because of the high damage that it that it produces. So if let's say you had a G3A3 that fired at 750 rounds a minute and it only fires at like 650 with that kind of damage and that kind of rate of fire, that would be the most OP weapon in the game. Same with the USAS-12 before the uh, first patch. It had a high rate of fire, and the frag range just devastated everything. It still it still can, but it just doesn't. It, it's down to a lower level now. So that's definitely um, you know one to bring up to your other friends. Um, I also heard that. Dice was gonna significantly um, underpower the M16A3 simply because people think it's OP. I it's not OP. It's accurate. It has you know a decent rate of fire, and that's all you need in a in a in an assault rifle. It's not like it fires a 7.62 by fucking 100 millimeter uh, round. It fires a 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. That is probably the one of uh, the most worldwide used rounds out to date. Um, and that's just how the M16 is in real, in real life. I'm not trying to compare real life weapons to these weapons, but I think they did a pretty damn good job with the recoil. Um, a lot of people think, you know, it has, I don't know why people think it's OP. It's, I think it's the perfectly balanced weapon. I have 30 server stars with that weapon. I know exactly how to use it. I know all of its capabilities. I've gotten, I've picked off people at semi-auto firing mode from 300 meters out using a Cobra sight and semi-auto, obviously. That and I mean, sure, I got lucky, but I know exactly how much the bullet drop is, and you know, basically all the ups and downs of that weapon. And I think, you know, I mean, if a person gets good at the Sega 12K. And let's say about a majority of the Battlefield 3 players are get used to the Sega 12K. So then people are going to start thinking that it's OP. But even though it's not OP. So it's kind of like people are mis... Like the M16 is misleading because a lot of good players use it. Like Level Cap or Rival X Factor. They're pretty competitive players. And... The gun is just easy to use. It's not like it's OP like the AK-971. It's easy to use, it's easy to control, and I think the most they can do to it is up the recoil. That's really all they can do. 
Um, so let's get on to Dino Mode. My response to the Dinosaur Mode uh, from Level Cap and Luton's uh, Dual Comp. So Dino Mode. That's kind of a crazy topic because, like I said before, the balancing and unbalancing of weapons. What about the balancement of dinosaurs? So would a T-Rex be able to take out a tank within one hit, or would a tank have to shoot three or four shells into the fucking T-Rex's dick before it could go down? I don't know. But, this is how I... This is what I thought up myself while watching the video. So, the humans have tanks. The dinosaurs have, you know, T-Rexes. And then, the humans have jets and helicopters, and the dinosaurs have pterodactyls and shit like that. And then, you know, after that, it goes just regular infantry, like the assault kit, and then like the velociraptor. So, there's multiple things you can, you can do with this mode, if they do come out with it. And people are taking that, that mode really seriously. I think DICE is starting to think, you know, maybe we should, you know, start making like a survival mode for, um, for these people that, you know, really want it. So... Um, I don't know, I just thought, you know, I don't know, it's kind of, it'd be kind of like Nazi zombies, but it would be really badass if you could, like, get in a helicopter and be able to launch missiles at a giant T-Rex that's going through, like, that's on, like, the hills of Carg Island or something like that. That'd be awesome. Um, it, it is definitely a good possibility. It could be either a separate DLC it could just be a, a different, whole different game mode. I know the patch would be probably really big, like the update for it, but um, only time will come. Maybe it's going to be like on the last, one of the last DLCs to give Battlefield 3 that last push before it, you know, Battlefield 4 um, starts to get revealed a lot more. And now for the last topic, Destructible MCOMs. This has been seen in BFBC2. And it was used by the attackers so that they wouldn't have to like rush in there. But the, the trick is is that it would take a lot of explosives and a lot of firepower to take out one MCOM. So I don't know. I think that's a pretty pretty good way to make sure that people um you know win the game. I don't know. It's kinda of weird because a lot of the maps it's almost nearly if impossible if you don't have a good team if you're one of the defenders on rush like for certain maps like operation metro it's almost nearly impossible to defend those uh second pair of objectives when you're defending and i think it would that would give that would further give the attackers even more of an advantage over the defenders because they can just you know launch like 10 or 11 smalls or rpgs at it and they could take it out, and then they wouldn't have to risk going in there and rushing in there and risking their lives. And that's what a lot of the thing comes from, because the defenders are able to get to take the attacker's tickets down when they rush into the objectives. So that would be kind of that would be kind of sketch to have, because the defenders would stop having to defend, and then the attackers would be more like defending themselves and launching RPGs and C4 at the objectives than actually rushing in and going for the objectives themselves and arming it, like, manually. So, those are just my opinions on those three topics. I hope you guys enjoyed. Rate, comment, subscribe. Definitely comment on what you think below. Um, I know a lot of people have potential of commenting and have only been getting, like, six or seven comments per video. So, I, I kind of want to see you guys get more active. Um, but other than that, uh, thanks for watching the video. Rate, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, happy killing.